The parliamentary whip system has been adopted by political parties and governments in various countries to compel members of parliament of a particular party to fall in line with the decisions of the caucus of their party on issues. Some believe this is undemocratic. Do whips make life miserable for MPs to discuss these and more? I have with me Honorable Matthew Nindam, Deputy Majority Whip and Member of Parliament for Pandai Constituency. My name is Nana Akusia Kunidra Santos Samuels, and you are watching The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, Dawa Industrial City Pulse Fitness Gym, and White Park Academy. <music> Member of Parliament for Pandai Constituency and uh, Deputy Majority Whip, uh, Matthew Njendam, it's a nice to you. Welcome to The Hard Truth, sir. Thank you, my sister. How are you? I'm well. Are you tired? Are you sleeping? Well, this work <laughs> is full of stress. So I know. We're managing. Okay, but it's good to have you, sir. Nice having I, you. I want to know who are the party whips and what exactly is their core responsibility? Yeah, thank you once again. I think uh, when you talk about whips, mm -hmm. you may say party whips or Focus whips is a wing of the leadership which is made up of uh, three individuals. That is the chief whip, who is the leader of the whips. That is both the minority and the majority. You have the first deputy whip, that is when the main whip is not there, you take over. Then we have the second deputy whip, both caucuses. Mm. So I happen to be the first deputy whip. So if my boss is not there, I am there. We are supposed to be operational managers, welfare officers, and to make sure that we maintain discipline in the chamber, mm. outside chamber. Party whips because the system we run, sometimes you have a policy from government and you may, you may disagree. But if that is the position of the, 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 the party or the government, you must make sure that everybody is whipped online to, 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 to. I see. To so, but, but it would seem that without a whip, uh, you know, political parties uh, would be extremely hard to, to push through. I mean, the agendas of the parties would be extremely hard to, to push through. On the average, how has the party whip influenced legislation in parliament? Yeah, we do, we do, we do a lot. We do a lot because. When it comes to matters on the floor of parliament, mm. numbers are very important because it's simple majority sometimes. You need quorum. And when it comes to voting, you need to make sure that you monitor and make sure that you fish for every individual member of parliament to come and vote. I remember when uh, this issue about uh, the gender minister currently, Otiko was a very thorny issue. The minority decided that, look, they were not going to, to get her approved. The majority and the government of the day thought, yes, she's the one we're sending. Mm. We needed to fish members of parliament from everywhere. We needed to make sure that nobody travels within that period to stay and vote. People who were not in parliament around some time, we needed to find a way of delaying the voting process for sides? them to come. Yeah, no, yes, no, the majority side. Right. Because for the minority, they will wish you are not there. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only way they will win the vote. So we, the party needs us, but because we work in parliament, we do, we do the work in parliament itself. Although through the majority leader, the party communicates to the majority leader and he relates that to the, to the whips. We think the party needs us, but the, the, the caucus itself needs the whipping system to be able to make sure that members of parliament behave and behave properly and towards the, the details of, of government. I, I want to know, in what ways have you effectively uh, discharged your duties as the you know, first uh, deputy majority chief whip? Well, like I said, if my main whip is not there, I am there. And it's not just about whipping people to, to vote. or the, it's, It talks about welfare matters too. Like I, I, I said, if today we having a caucus meeting, we must make sure that it is an early caucus meeting. We need to provide breakfast. It is the work of the whips to do that. 
TNT in Parliament is the work of the whips to make sure that you arrange any benefits. Let me just put it, any benefits entitlement. So, so what, what, to, does, what does it take? What does it take to be a good whip? It takes submissiveness. It takes you to listen. Mm -hmm. You are dealing with people who are senior in age. Some have been in Parliament before you. You are just it's just a privilege for you to be there as a whip. And people, you, you are dealing with all manner of persons. Somebody will speak to you as if you have nothing to say. But you see, so you, t you need to be very submissive because you are all members of parliament, first and foremost. Mm. You, you are a leader. And especially some of us, you are still a young man. So somebody sees you as his, his boy, but you are a whip. You mm. are supposed to discipline him. So you see, if you are not submissive, there's no way you can do. You need to also be up and doing. Mm. You need to be up and doing. You need to be very smart. Matthew, in as much as uh, you know, the whips help uh, you know to oil and deepen uh, party discipline and unity of purpose in Parliament. Do you think that, or don't you think that the whip system also undermines freedom of speech and voting in Parliament? Well, you are entitled to. If you are entitled to that opinion. But I don't, I, don't, I don't think it is so. Because you said right now that, um, you know, sometimes you yourself, you're not in favor of some, some decisions, but, you know, that's the, the, the party's decision or the government's decision. Yes, yes. You, 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 you may not like it, but you have to. Because per, per, per the constitution that we're running in this country, there are some, we are running the presidential system of government in this country. All powers are in the hands of the president. So what happens to freedom of speech and everything? You can, yeah, for freedom of speech, you have every right to say whatever you want to say. But eventually, you, you, have, to, you have to obey caucus discipline. But, but really, MPs... The fact, that, the fact that there's freedom of speech doesn't mean that you leave your children in the house to do whatever they want to do. Even when the decision is wrong? It might not be wrong. That's, you may think it's wrong. It might not be wrong. But the fact that it's freedom in the house doesn't mean that your child comes home to sleep. What, what if the court? number of uh, you know uh, MPs disagree with a certain decision, but the whip, you know, you need to keep you, them in you, line? You to can't. You can't. If 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 a majority of MPs disagree with the government decisions, that decision will not come to the floor of Parliament. I see. It wouldn't come. It will be aborted at a, at at its initial stages. Mm. But when it gets to the floor of Parliament, there is no way you, you few yes few individuals may think that we don't think that this should be done. But if that is the position of the, the party, that is the position of government, that means you are indirectly overthrowing your government. That's the meaning. If members of parliament decide to vote overwhelming majority against the policy of government, that means that you have, it, it's, it's a coup d'etat in a way mm. against your own government. I don't think you will do that. But many MPs have a wealth of experience and um, knowledge as well as some personal you know, convictions of, on some issues. But they are compelled again to, to vote along party lines in accordance with them. Uh, you know, what may not be necessarily in their interest. Isn't it offensive to block such a uh, repository of skill and intelligence in the interest of government's convenience? No, if it, it's, not for, it's not for nothing. But if you take the 1992 constitution, it states that majority of ministers must be coming from parliament. Mm. Okay, majority of ministers must be coming from parliament, which means that a chunk of the ministers you see today are from, uh, are, are from parliament. They are members of parliament, doubling as executives. That is not for nothing. Two, it's not also for nothing that for you to be able to contest and win a seat on the party ticket, when you come to the floor of parliament, you are obliged to stay with the party. You cannot, you cannot say, I have my, my, I have won my elections, and for that matter, I want to leave MPP and go and decision. No, you you're talking that? about the interests of the common people of the of the nation. So no, if some decisions, sir, if some we decisions, voted, we voted for the constitution. If, if some the decisions aren't so convenient for us all, but you think that as a whip, you know, you need to keep your people in line. So, so you know, that, that, that's what I'm saying. That you have no choice. You may, you may, you may have a difficulty. Okay, that look, I believe that this policy that my government is introducing. I don't want to vote for it, mm. okay? In some advanced democracies, in the US, for instance, they record their voting and everything, so they know how you vote. That is how they have adopted. Mm -hmm. If you come to our part, of, <laughs> our part of our democracy, you are not supposed to even disclose your voting. We do it by voice, unless extreme cases.
uh, very extreme cases that you see that we do the secret balloting. But we are there to make sure that they check where you have your voting your voting took place, mm -hmm. whether you did it for in favor of the government or you did it against government. <laughs> we see. are there to monitor, you see. Mm -hmm. Even 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 on the floor of parliament. Sometimes we have the moderates. There may be issues on the floor. You may not want to be that kind of too partisan. We have the moderates. They speak in a such a way that you know that yeah, he's not in favor. But you cannot be vehemently very strong on on your party's position. When you do that consistently, you will not come back to Parliament. But really, as an MP, you also have a duty to look at the interest of your constituents. If your constituents, you know, don't like what your party is doing, are you more for the constituents or you more for the party? You are more for your constituents. Right. Unfortunately, uh, our democracy hasn't got into a period where MPs go to organize their constituents, mm -hmm. pick their inputs. I'm going to vote on this matter. Do, do we even what know exactly? Do we even know what is the we, That's what I'm saying. That we haven't gotten to that that point. So where, what you take the decisions for them, yes, whether they so, like yes, it or not. It is assumed that you are the MP, you know all. It is assumed that the president of the day is excellent and Adam Kwakufuadu that we voted overwhelmingly for should take decisions on our our our, our behalf. Yes. Some may be wrong, some very right, and that is what they says and trickle down to, to Parliament. So as a member of Parliament for Kwandai, my people think and believe mm -hmm. that I should know that whatever position I take should represent their position. But is that wrong or right? It's not too right, but that is what we've adopted. It's not too right. You see, under normal <laughs> system, like, you go back to your constituents, mm -hmm. that is going to build on this but there's going to be a bill on this uh, tax, maybe property tax, mm -hmm. for instance, is going to increase. Mm -hmm. What is your view? Do you agree? Do you disagree? So my people tell me, yes, when you go, go and disagree. Then when you come, you disagree. But this one, we haven't got in there. Yeah. Okay? So this time, my party thinks that, look, we have to increase property tax to be able to generate enough revenue to deal with these issues on the ground. So as a member of parliament for Kwanda, who is on the ticket of MPP, you can't come and say that, no, my party is wrong. And for that matter, I'm opposing it. Mm. I'm going to vote against it. No, this cannot be done. Would you, Matthew, agree with that the whip system sometimes be the passage of ill convinced and, you know, or, you know, half-baked laws and agreements in Parliament? Yeah, I agree. I do. I agree. Mm. Perfectly agree. And that's why sometimes you get some laws, they pass. And for and the some government time, comes, you then know, it, government comes, right. you have to subject it to some I'm saying further amendments. Yes, yes. I, I think somewhere um, in um, some time back, the former member of parliament for Boise, he said, with the that I read, he says, there are times when you have a heart attack uh, because of certain decisions. When you meet some of the majority MPs or minority MPs, they tell you that they know that certain decisions are just bad yet they have no other opinions or options than to vote for it. This is in uh, you know, September, um, um, uh, April this year, 2016. Again, um, if it's bad enough, how, how do you sleep at night? I mean, really, <laughs> are you able to like it's, it's, it's worrying. sleep? It's worrying. Like he said, I agree with him. He's my senior. My, he's my senior. I has been in parliament, I think, three times or something. I agree. You see, but sometimes, don't look at members of parliament like we're doing the wrong thing. You see, because you are not there, you are out there, you look at it as, oh, you could have done it this way. No, if you are there, you cannot do that. That is discipline. We have our constitution. You read the constitution, you understood. The party had a position, you understood the party's position. You decided to become an MP on the party's position. Yes, so when you get there, the party says, this is what we want you to do. Right, but I, I get that. But have you personally, you have you taken a decision that, you know, wish oh, yes, you up at yes, night? Yes, yes, like agree. I should have done this yeah, better. Some, 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 like which times. one? <laughs> Tell me, sir. There be, there be some, I'm still a whip now. Yes. So I shouldn't be, I shouldn't. Oh, I, should, no. I mean, see, tell me the me past me. one. I, I, oh, yeah, my, my brother, uh, my, my reformer member, he's right. been, been able to tell you this because he's not a member of parliament again. Mm. You see, that's why he's bold enough to tell you some of these things. That look, he felt sometimes it's not good for him to do this, mm. but he has no choice than to do it. Look, there are a lot of people today who are talking about Amery. They didn't want to do it, even when they were in the majority. 
I didn't have any choice than to vote for the Ameridia. Oh. Ich, ich, mm -hmm. There are people who are in the majority today who actually didn't want to vote, but they have no choice than to vote. Yes, your conscience may not may not be very happy with you, but that is the risk of politics. You 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 have sometimes you'll be happy, sometimes you'll be happy. But, but, but happy. What, what of your beliefs? What of your religious beliefs and all of that? I mean, <laughs> yes, religious beliefs. Yes, I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. I believe. In honesty, I right. believe in the truth, mm -hmm. because that is the only way you can. The Bible says, "Say the truth, and the truth shall set you free." Okay, I agree with all those things, and we have politics. <laughs> okay. So it's politics different yes. from your religious mm -hmm. uh, beliefs. No, that's what I'm saying. That religious beliefs, I agree. There are certain fundamental or things Christian beliefs. Let me yes. put it that way. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Right. I believe in this. I believe in that. I believe in that. There is an issue on the floor of parliament. I don't like it. Okay, my conscience don't 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 agree so with. So what me. do you do personally when you don't like certain? <laughs> Sometimes people? it's not about what you like. Wow. It's not about what you like. Even in life, it's not what you like that is given to you. Sometimes you don't but, like what but, is given but, to you, but, but, but you accept it because of but faith. Matthew, will, will God be happy with you? When very you, happy. God will be very happy with you. God will be happy with you yes. when you take those decisions but that you know won't be in favor of. Do you know that they've been sometimes of, that you of question, the nation? Do you know that they've been sometimes that you yourself personally you question God why He He allowed certain things to happen to you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you don't believe it? I believe yes. that, but, but you yes. Ask you... God, why should this happen to me? Okay, you have but to accept it. Accept what? Accept what, what is given to you at that particular time. And, and then at that time, when God comes and that decision you take, I mean, it's, it's a wrong one. What do you do? Where, where do you the go kingdom to? of God is inherited by divine. I see. <laughs> How often, Matthew, do, do you use a three-lined whip on bill and agreements that are passed in the House of Parliament? Very rare occasions. Mm. There must be a very important bill to, to for you to use a three-line whip, because with a three-line whip, mm -hmm. nobody escapes. Yeah, everybody must obey, like it or not. You must obey. That one must be like I was telling you. Tiko's case, we use a three-line whip to be able to make sure that she gets, she gets her way through. But did, did you use the, 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 the three-line whip in the case of the Ghana-U.S. Military Defense Corporation Agreement? No. Which did you use a two-line? It was, it was a normal whipping system. And that alone, the, 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 the military, the U.S. military team generated, generated interest simultaneously from our side. Everybody wanted to be part of it. And the minority, at that time, realized that we had the numbers. Mm. You see that they did not they did not call for vote on the on the floor. Normally, the three line whips can when you you actually have to vote on the floor. Of, mm -hmm. or you have to vote on the floor of parliament. But this one it didn't happen. So members were just there, and we used the voice the voice voting, and it went through. We'll be right back. When you dream. Are you searching for something new in education for your child? Look no further. Alpha White Park Academy is here. Imagine an institution with a mission to facilitate the holistic development of every child enrolled. Imagine a school that provides excellent teaching, grounded in godly character, without any form of discrimination. Imagine an academy with a well-equipped computer lab and a library stocked with relevant books. Your imaginations are within reach with Alpha White Park Academy. At Alpha White Park Academy, a multi-skilled and Montessori approach is incorporated into our scheme for your child and infant school. We combine Ghana education service and other globally relevant curricula for your child in primary and junior high levels to have the best of educational experience. Our staff are highly qualified and well motivated to care for your child's every need. Security is provided to ensure safety of your child. Locate Alpha White Park Academy at number AE 401-10. Aquile Kaswa, behind the Living God and close to the Credit Union Training Center. Digital address code is CX044-3030. Call us on 0502-261-944 or 0544-188-045. Rush now to Alpha White Pack Academy and enroll your child. Alpha White Pack Academy, education makes. When you dream, dream big.
Welcome back to The Hard Truth. We are proudly brought to you by Murphy Holmes, our Industrial City Pulse Fitness Gym, and uh, White Park Academy, Member of Parliament for Kwandai Constituency, and uh, Deputy Majority Whip in Parliament, uh, Matthew, or Honorable Matthew Nyendam, is still here. Sir, uh, you are occupying a very hot seat. What are some of the pressures that, you know, confront you regularly? Well, as, as, as a whip, and or as a leader in parliament, your biggest challenge is how often you have to visit your constituency because you spend much of your time in parliament. Mm -hmm. It's a very big challenge. Mm -hmm. You have to bring people that can be called your, your father. You bring him to book, which is very, very difficult. I am Matthew, second, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 42. Okay. I'm still young. Mm -hmm. This is my second term in Parliament. You have people like Kennedy Ajabon who has been in Parliament for almost five terms. Are you scared of him? I'm not scared of him, but I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. You have people like Honorable uh, Akuto uh, Osei, who has been in Parliament, I think this is about the fifth term. Quite elderly and quite seasoned members of Parliament. And they all come under you. You have to discipline them when they are misbehaving. You have somebody like Katie Hammond. You see, mm. you see what you see what it is. So, so sometimes it's 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 quite difficult. Mm. It's quite difficult. So, do you get you know tired of your position? Oh yes, I remember two days ago. I I, I got tired of something and I just decided to forget about like it. Like what? What was it? Tell me. <laughs> I just decided to forget about. Tell it. me what was it. We, we went to, when we went to Koforidia, right. there was this issue about voting. Mm -hmm. We needed to, the way the album was prepared, it was not well prepared. So we needed to assist, because the whips, you know the people, I know I know my colleagues very well, I know their names and all those. So it got to a time and somebody just said something. And what the person said? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, Matthew, you are swallowing information. No, it is not so, nice. So somebody, somebody just said, Something and I said okay fine. Then I left the place. Oh, you left the ground. Yes. Why? But did you vote? After voting, yeah. I was to assist members so mm -hmm. that at least the process would be faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was just like it's like I didn't know what I was doing. I just I just cause it got I was just pissed off completely mm -hmm. and I needed to by leave. own members. Your... Yes, yes, I needed to leave. If if I'd been there, it, it was not going to be. So I just left. There is a widely held view that whips are, you know, tyrants and generally employed to, to make life miserable for MPs. How might this be true? And do you, you know, or you do your colleagues see you or view it that way? Are you a tyrant? I am not. In the, if you go to the Westminster, mm -hmm. that is London, yeah. the, the system they practice, they can discipline you as, as, mm -hmm. as a whip can make your life very miserable. Very, very miserable. Yeah. Because he's supposed to be your welfare officer. So if your welfare officer wants to, to actually deal with you, you, he can deal with you. Most of the times travels, most of the times your allowances, most of the times your, 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 your well-being and everything in Parliament is in the hands of this person. But unfortunately, our part of the whip is not as strong as the West Minister, Minister Stein. But... All the same, we, 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 you need to have a very big heart to be able to, to deal with them. But I am not a tyrant. I'm not. But, but what difficulties do you encounter in, you know, making sure that members of your majority caucus toe the same line, in, you know, with parliament proceedings? It's difficult, especially on, 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 on when it comes to our MPP side, where everybody thinks that he is a self-made man. <laughs> mm, everybody thinks that look, I am okay. I'm self-made. It's very difficult to get them there. If you listen to the airwaves of late, you realize that attendance in Parliament has been a very big problem. Attendance because attendance in Parliament has been very poor, and it is our responsibility to make sure that you get these members to come to the floor of Parliament. So is it irresponsibility on the part of the MPs or not? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes sure it is pure irresponsibility. Sometimes. It is pure irresponsibility. Sometimes there are genuine cases, okay? Sometimes there are genuine cases. A member of parliament has to travel. His travel is out of the country. Mm. Obviously, you cannot bring him back. But some people, just for reasons known to themselves, 
We don't want to come to the floor of parliament. Call them, send them text messages. They will read, they will not appear. I see, but it is well known among, you know, those we didn't mention Westminster, uh, that the web devoted a lot of time collecting um, useful information on MPs that could be, uh, you know, used as a leverage against them in the future. Do, I think they call it the Black Book or something. Do you have a spying network? We do, even as we speak, like I told you about the attendance, we collect data every day. Is it a bad stuff? Uh, like what? Tell me. What we do, you enter parliament, we mark you the time you enter. You okay. leave, you mark the time you have left. Do you follow them so around? We to, yeah, we're going to write a compressive report on this to the presidency. This is how MPs are. I'm talking about their personal lives. Do you follow them around? Do you have some very vital, <sighs> you know... As a whip, we receive a lot of information from people. Give us examples. <laughs> oh, no. Why? That's difficult. <laughs> That's difficult. There are people... Don't who... mention names, but tell us. I Just <laughs> give me an idea Look, of such information. There are, there, are, there, are, there are instances you are there as a way. <laughs> Somebody will come and tell you the problem he has with an MP. Eh? It could be marital problem. It could be monetary problem. It could be anything. They mm. come to tell you that this MP has done this to me. Mm -hmm. I want you to invite this MP. Talk to him about this. Other than that, this is what I'm going to do. Banks come to us. Look, this member of parliament has done so so and so. We want you to call him. This is what he has done. We call them. Then you know, look, this is what you have done. This is what you have done. If you don't do it, this is the next step that the bank is going to take. This is the next step that the individual is going to take. So they bring they bring all these matters to us. I'm talking about information you don't tell them, you just know. I mean you, you have them followed and you know you keep these very vital information and you leverage them with the information like what? I don't know. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> but you see, the whip, the whip, the whip, you are very close to members of parliament. So you get to know a lot of things about them. But there are some, some issues that are their personal issues. You don't have to go into into, into So you them. don't use their personal issues against no, them? No, you can't do that. Everybody <laughs> has a personal life to live. Mm. You will be aware that this is what is going on with this person. You don't have to go. By what? Things. By your spies giving you information? People come to tell you. No, but do you have personal sp Have you Have you selected people as spies? We really don't information? have spies. Are you sure? No, we don't. we don't. In Ghana, you don't need a spy to get information. You don't. People <laughs> voluntarily give yeah, that. people around. Yeah, they don't <laughs> give you information. <laughs> and, and parliament is such I that. See. We, we, the parliamentary staff is also there. The office of the whips, we have staff there. Every member of parliament has some kind of assistance. All these people, they voluntarily give you information. But to say we have spies and put a spy on a member of parliament, I don't think so. We don't have that. During a presentation on post-election seminar for Parliament uh, of Uganda in 2016, former Majority Leader Akhlet Savoka stated, in many cases, which are, you know, privy to uh, highly sensitive and personal information regarding, um, you know, members of parliament and their activities. Where do you get such information from? You mentioned just now that people tell you, but some sensitive information, where do you get them from? <laughs> it's the same source. But you know that members of parliament themselves sometimes confide in you as a whip and tell you stories that they wouldn't even tell their wives. Like what? They tell you. Like what? <laughs> some are confidential matters. Some are very confidential matters. You don't need to sit on air and But you don't need to mention anybody's name. I just, I just give me an idea. I need to know what's happening to our MPs, sir. I mean, give me something. What do you want to know? I just want to know. I have to give you one or two instances. Personal matter, bank statements. I want the sense no, it's, of it's not about bank statement. It's about indebtedness to banks. Mm. It's not just about bank statement. And what else? Somebody goes to bank, decide to do one or two things. It's not trying to be honorable enough. To pay back. Are you getting me? We get to know. Some people have a transaction, a transaction with individuals. For some reasons, they have defaulted. They don't want to. And some people to intentionally want to defraud members of parliament. Can all those issues we then, then let me put it this way. What threats have you used to compel members of parliament to, you know, vote for a certain issue in a certain way in parliament? The threats. Yes. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying that. <laughs> per, per, per. I don't know if you know if you heard about this man. 
Yes, man. Who was a crusader on this uh, corruption thing in Parliament? It's a very popular person. Who? That old man. What's the name? From our side, uh, Odobin, Asukuma Odobin, the MP, the former MP, mm -hmm. who talked about members of Parliament receiving bribes. He never came back to Parliament. Why? Because he has misconducted himself as a member of parliament on the ticket of MPP, where you can come out boldly to label allegations that may not be true. You will not come back to parliament because you are running on the ticket of the party. So if today, if you are a member of parliament and you decide to be going contrary to the dictates of the party, you will not come back to parliament. You internally, <laughs> the internal system will vomit you So out. what, you tell them that, my friend, if you do this, you're not coming yes, back? Yes, you know, yes, you will come back. Some of this, you don't need to tell them. They know that, look, this behavior I'm putting up, if I continuously put this behavior up, I will be voted out. Right. I'm, 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 I'm talking about what you do to them. Some threats that, hey, this is, this is serious. I have, to be, I have to be in line. Personal, personal threats that, you know, you put across to, to compel them. I have never threatened anybody. I see. I have never threatened anybody. I appeal to you to know that, look, this is government's position. But does it come as a threat? Well, if you want to call it a threat, I will not disassociate myself completely from it. But I don't see it as a threat. I let you know that this thing you are doing has dying consequences on you. Sometimes the presidency will get to know. And I'm not sure you'll be very happy that your issues are in the presidency, that this is how you are behaving. That alone is enough traits to let you behave well. Because we know everybody, mm. everybody on the floor of parliament, I can say without any contradiction that all the 169 MPs, I know everybody. You know everybody, you know everybody. their history, you know their, their <laughs> private issues. I may not know all those ones, but I know you that if voting takes place and you are not there, I will know you are not there. And I will know you have no permission not to be there. So you intentionally refuse to be there. I call you, you refuse to report to your cause. It's enough ground to let you, the, the leader know that this person, this is how you have behaved. Right. So many believe that the maintenance of a party web system is detrimental to uh, our democracy, for true democracy to prevail in matters of national interest. Should the web system be eliminated or do you think we should, you know, just, you know, make some reforms with it? We may, we may reform it in a way, but you cannot tell me that you don't need discipline. The whip is supposed to maintain discipline, period. In every society, you need discipline. For you to be able to, to grow, if you are not disciplined, forget it. So after the whip system, there is no way you can, you can advocate for it to be abolished. It can never. Mm. Because you need to be disciplined. The majority leader alone cannot do it. He cannot do it. The chief whip alone cannot do it. So after the whipping system, it, it, in every democracy, it is there. You cannot do away with it. You can either, it can either be liberal in a way or harsh. Do we have a harsh or a liberal? Um, yeah, but like I told you, there are, if you go to the West Minister, the, the, the whip is stronger than even the majority leader. We People call them the rulers of darkness. We can decide to, 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 to overthrow a whole parliamentary house. We can decide to overthrow the leadership. Because we interact directly with it. We can make sure that today they won't be sitting. They won't be sitting. We okay. can advocate that, look, they won't be sitting today. We will not make noise. <laughs> it's just a matter of letting members know that, look, don't do this, don't do this. This is what we want. And if you don't do this, this is what we'll get. And they will do it. it it's a very powerful system. Mm. Because you so, deal so with members. It's always harsh or liberal. Do you think ours you is it? liberal. It's not harsh. It's not harsh. No, it's not harsh. It's not harsh. It's liberal because the majority leader is very powerful in our, our our system that we run in parliament. The majority leader is very powerful. And because of that, the whip system, most things don't really come directly to us. Mm, it goes to him. It goes to him. But when you have everything concerning web, absolutely everything in your hands, they, 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 you can hold the whole house into ransom. I see. Yes. We'll be right back. When you dream
Are you searching for something new in education for your child? Look no further. Alpha White Park Academy is here. Imagine an institution with a mission to facilitate the holistic development of every child enrolled. Imagine a school that provides excellent teaching, grounded in godly character, without any form of discrimination. Imagine an academy with a well-equipped computer lab and a library stocked with relevant books. Your imaginations are within reach with Alpha White Park Academy. At Alpha White Park Academy, a multi-skilled and Montessori approach is incorporated into our scheme for your child and infant school. We combine Ghana Education Service and other globally relevant curricula for your child in primary and junior high levels to have the best of educational experience. Our staff are highly qualified and well motivated to care for your child's every need. Security is provided to ensure safety of your child. Locate Alpha White Park Academy at number AE 401-10. Aquile Kaswa, behind the Living God and close to the Credit Union Training Center. Digital address code is CX0443030. Call us on 0502-261-944 or 0544-188045. Rush now to Alpha White Park Academy and enroll your child. Alpha White Park Academy, education makes. When you dream, dream big. Welcome back to The Hard Truth, uh, Member of Parliament for Pandai uh, Constituency and um, Majority uh, Deputy Chief Whip is still here, Martin Yendam. So we have received assurances uh, from both the President and Information Minister Musta, Mustafa Hamid that the right to information bill will be passed into law uh, you know, by close of year. What is the progress so far? Well, it's still on the other paper, featuring very prominently. We, 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 we are already working on it, but we have some other bills to that must run concurrently. We've done the witness protection bill. Mm. We are doing the legal aid bill. We've, 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 uh, we are at the second consideration stage of the right information bill, which I'm sure by next week we'll start doing some, we're considering some amendments on, on it. So we are on track. Concerns have been raised about the bill. One of such concerns is the clause five, which states that information, uh, you know, is exempt, uh, you know, if prepared for a submission or submitted to the office of the president and the vice president. Many find this very worrying. Uh, in fact, the uh, you know the commissioner of Shraj, Mr. Joseph Witha, uh, said something like that. So, you know, it would be, it will make the law uh, you know paralyzed one if that is not put in place. Should we expect a review? You see, the right to information bill is a bill that the constitution recognizes the right to information. So it is it is an undeniable fact that we need it. So let nobody think that that bill will not go through. It will go through. But like all other bills, we need to scrutinize the kind of information that we want it to go out. The fact that we have the right information bill, or you have the right information, doesn't mean that you can just walk and ask for any information anyhow. Other than that, this, <laughs> are you going to run the, the nation where everything of yours is in the public domain? So the bill will definitely go through a lot of scrutiny, okay? Certain information that we think that sending it out will, will, will jeopardize the future of this country. Mm. We have to amend the clauses to make sure that they are in tune with, with our constitution, they are in tune with our practices and conventions. They are in tune to the fact that we will not get up one day where somebody will just pick up a very sensitive information and crash this nation. I think all of us must be concerned. Yeah, all of us must be concerned. But Marty, it is not anything, you know, at the presidency that, that should be untouched. So shouldn't yeah, we... so those things that are supposed to be touched, but, be touched. But, but, but shouldn't we make room for, you know, some level of disclosure there? Obviously, there should be. We have, we have, we have the president and the constitution to come every every year to give us a presidential message mm -hmm. tell us what is going on they have adopted something from the presidency 
where they say meet the press, where ministers are all going around in tune or in terms giving uh, uh, details of what goes on at their ministry. The president himself mm, meets the press, and the press have the opportunity to ask whatever question they want. Once a year. It's not bad. Really? Yes. Once a year, who knows? Tomorrow but, it will but, be twice a year. But, but really, let me put this across. Maybe you help me. I have sent a letter to the presidency, I did it through Eugene Ahen, the communication right. director, to interview His Excellency. And it's taken forever. Maybe you can... It's not forever. The presidency is just, the president is just one and a half year old in office. So, so it's not forever. So, so, so your, I, your time will come. Okay, so are you assuring me your that time will come. it will come when? His Excellency Leonardo Dr. Akufuado will want you to talk to him. On the hard interview. truth here. Yes! He will. I've, I've seen him grant interview to some other media houses. They did one-on-one -on -one like we are doing. Those media houses are not bigger than your media house. They are not, those people who had that particular interview are not better than you. It's just that maybe the timing. But okay, so, timing. so I'm putting it across to you. So maybe you, you can facilitate Continue, that. continue to talk to Eugene. Tell Eugene that, look, you are waiting. I your do. Time I, I do that every day. <laughs> no, it's good. Continue. It's good. I hear you. And you must know the presidency. The president is a very busy person. Mm. You admit that. I know. Very busy. Very, but very but busy. we are still waiting for him. On no, you will. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm assuring you that you will get that interview done. Amen. You will get it done. I hear you, sir. Yes. Yesterday, yes. the minority in parliament held a, a press conference, you know, indicating that the MPP government is, you know, setting the stage uh, to rig the 2020 elections. They cited several reasons for, you know, this uh, conclusion, including unwarranted and unfair transfers of uh, two persons in charge of the birth and death registry and, uh, you know, cash registration issues, you know, among others. What do you make of the, the claims of the minority? Well, like I said, they're also entitled to their opinion. It's good. That is democracy for you. If you see something is not going right, you have every right to question it. But unfortunately, I don't like the tangent they went. And they're in a minority. They can decide to say whatever they want to say, rigging elections here and there. But that is not true. I had a difficulty. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Why were the people transferred? I don't know the reason. And I'm sure you don't also know the reason. So those authority, or the authority that transferred those people, should quickly replace those people. Because it is a state institution. And for that matter, must function as such. So if you are transferring them, you have every right to transfer every, every individual. Transfers are normal. You can't be transferred from one point A to point B, C to D, is transfer, but you have to replace. But to think that somebody will want to use the birth and death registration to rig elections, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. In any case, they are talking about the Ghana card registration mm. and the two legitimate uh, uh, documents for now for the registration is the passport and then the, the, the birth certificates. But they themselves said, yeah, people should not register on the Ghana card. So are they complaining? Okay. But again, last Saturday, your party elected new executives to see the affairs of the MPP overall. What are your impressions? You know, so impressed. On the outcome of the delegate conference. So impressed. Even though you left early after voting. Yes, so impressed. <laughs> and then uh, let me also use the opportunity to congratulate all the winners and the losers. Internal elections, somebody will definitely win, somebody will definitely lose. But it is an MPP elections. And I am happy that once again we've distinguished ourselves very creditably because we, we, we didn't go to Koforidu to fight. No. We went there, we voted. Those who won are very happy. Those who lost may not be happy because it's normal in human institution that what you're looking for, you don't get, you're not too happy. But by and large, it was a very successful Congress. And I have the confidence in those who elected. They will do the job. 2020, we have guaranteed that we will work hard to win power. Because of what you think? What, what have you done to secure your win in 2020? Oh, I think uh, if, you, if you listen to MPP in opposition, some of the promises that we made to the people of this country, we are on course. I believe sincerely that we are on course. We've done the, most of the social interventions, most of the social interventions. What deals with human life directly about the free secondary school education, about the nursing training colleges allowances, the teacher training colleges allowances, 
trying to reorganize and rejuvenate the national health insurance uh, scheme. But are these interventions enough, no, you know, to, no. to, to warrant a win? No, no, they are not enough. They are not enough. But I'm telling you, we have started positively. You see, if you start well, you definitely will end well. The one village one dam has started in earnest. Some dams, in my constituency, for instance, they've done almost eight. Some other constituencies they are on doing. The one district one factory, we haven't done much about it. I am very positive minded that by close of Nanado's four years, some positive indicators will come from, from the one district one factory. We have talking about over a hundred thousand graduates that we are employing on this uh, NAPCO which is the, their own with their interviews. By close of July, this month we are, you should get people on this NACO over 100,000 young graduates. I see. It's not, it's, 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 so you see that we've talked about issues and we are, we are, we are, we are actually practicalizing them. Okay? So with, with, with peace in our party, with one purpose, one attention, I don't see why we should not win 2020 elections. But I'm also looking at the poverty, you know, gap in our country. How do we bridge that? Yes, we. It's, it's been a worrying issue. The poverty gap keeps widening because one, a lot of people complete school have no employment, and I always say that as a nation we need to take unemployment situation very serious because if we don't do that, one day the youth of this country will will definitely come after us. And two, we have to have to reform our educational system because the kind of education we give to our people are not the best. Where everybody thinks that I must get a job to do from government, it's not possible. Hundreds of graduates come us every year, and I don't think any government will have the capacity to employ all these young men and women every year. It's not possible. So we need to restructure our educational system. But that one is a longer term. But now it's not. It's not. The second issue about the, this uh, uh, poverty thing is to see how we can we can we can actually move our 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 attention from the services sector to the to the agriculture sector, which we all say is the backbone of this country. How best can we can we revitalize our agriculture sector that can employ as many as young men as possible? We need to do that. This one district one factory thing we are talking about. It's not for nothing. It's to come and generate. Do every resources. constituency need yes, a district yes. and, and, and a, 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 a no, factory? No, no, no. When we say one district, one factory, that is a mantra. Okay? If Panda and Olesi, we are not too far. Even Bimbla and Krachin Chumri, we are not too far. We should be able to have a factory that can take care of all the sectors. A very vibrant factory. But you said one district. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that, one is, factory. that is the mantra. So, so should the mantra be changed to, to you no, know, district that merging have, districts? No, and, there are districts that will have. One district will have. Another district will have. But you, you ask a question, must every district have a factory? That is your question. And I'm telling you that. It should be possible. In other words, it should be that an enclave where we all produce. For instance, if you go to that area, the, the, the Eastern Corridor, mm. we do roots cross. Talk about cassava, talk about yam. It's a very prominent things that we do there. So if you have a young factory in Bimbla, or you have a young factory in Bandai, must you have a young factory in Wolesi, must you have a young factory in this, uh, uh, obviously, where are you going to get the raw materials to be able to feed, to feed these industries? Are you getting me? So you if see. we have a very huge one at a very vantage point, it should be able to grab all the young men and women who actually want to work. And it will open up the place for investors, and everybody will be smiling. We hope so. But going back to the Congress, uh, reps from the NDC and the you know, minority refused to show up despite the NPP sending three invitation letters. Do you think the reasons they gave for not showing up hold any merit? Well, it's, there's no, I don't think that there's nothing that can justify their behavior. Mm. We've been in this country together. Anytime an NDC is having a Congress, they send their invitation to NPP. We'll go there and say whatever I want to say. It depends democracy. But for some reason, they decided not to appear. They are entitled to their... After all, if somebody invites you, you want, you go. If you want, you don't go. But I don't think that is good enough. 
I don't think that's true. And I don't want our party to repeat that when they invite them for a Congress. Mm. I don't expect them to pay them back saying they will not go. I don't think that should be the way to go. They should go represent, say what you want to say, wish them well. It doesn't take anything from you. But it actually deepens our democracy. See, other countries are not able to do what we are doing when it comes to our, 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 our credentials in our democracy. We, we, we accommodate ourselves very well. So it was unfortunate. It was a slip on their side. And I think they will not be very happy going into, into, into the future with that behavior. What, what do you expect to see Mr. Blay uh, do differently to, you know, positioning the party to victory 2020? Well, I expect Blay, the secretary, the organizer, okay, mm -hmm. to go back quickly to the grassroots, appeal to them because expectations are very high. Mm. Expectations are so high because the young men in this country who fought with all their strength for us to come to power, some are not very happy. They think that we are not giving them jobs. We need to go and explain to them. Yeah, I have a problem with that, giving them jobs. Are you yeah. giving your party, you know, uh, our members, job boys, job for the nation? I mean, what is that? Our party people know part of the nation. They are, but, but you, you talk like it's just a fraction. I mean, NPP grassroots are not Ghana. I mean, they are part of it, but not yes. the whole thing. Yes, I agree with you. So what? So so when, when there is a, an opening, are you going to wear your party card? And no, we're not going card? to do that. So what but I'm saying? telling you that our people are not happy that we are not giving them jobs. So when there are opportunities for us to get jobs, this NAPCOP thing we are talking about. <laughs> so this, they should be considered first among everybody other Everybody should be taken. Everybody. But we can't take everybody. Are you getting me? We are talking about 100,000. Those who apply... <laughs> There are almost 200,000. You can't take everybody. Some MPP will get, some will not get. Some NDC will get, some will not get. But, but we need to explain. That's what I mean. That They need to go down to the grassroots and explain to the people how the whole of these things works. Are you getting me? What is it that they, they, they are expecting? We are a party. We just came to government. We are less than two years old. You don't think that it's possible for government to just get everybody job within a second? It's not possible. They need to keep MPP in government for a very long time. That is where we can satisfy our our, our people. Is, is that, is that an years. interesting mantra? Being in in, in you know in government for a very long time. Remember President Kufo and uh, um, um, former President Kufo saying that at the at the Congress, and uh, President Kufuor also saying that you know that he hopes the party will be in in in. in we need to be the only party. In, yeah, in government for a long country. time. The only party that can transform this country is MPP. All the achievements we are talking about, all from MPP, talk about Kufo's era. Take all what Kufo has done out of this nation, and you have nothing to say again. Is it really? Yeah, 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 just tell me. Let's take all the social interventions from Kufo's era out of this nation and see if you can talk about something else. No. We have the capacity to develop this nation. But four years is not enough time. For you to actually say that you can transform economy, you can transform the entire sector of the economy. It's not possible. Eight years is not possible. Okay? Go, go, go. You see, don't, let's leave these developed countries out of the system and come to African countries where they've been able to make some progress. It is a party that has stayed in power for a very long time. You see, Jerry John Rollins, his former president, Jerry John Rollins, had the opportunity to govern this country for 19 good years. Unfortunately, he didn't use it well. He had ample time, uninterrupted. But unfortunately, he couldn't... So you think your, your party will do better? If we better. are able to get ah, 20 years in government of MPP. Continuous. 20 20, years. Yes, uninterrupted. I see. But not one president, obviously. Mm. But the party and the structures maintained and lubricated. You have any problem after 20 years in this I'm, I'm curious, sir. So I... I uh, when when an adro is not, you know, maybe let's say you win again next year, to 2020, yes, who, who will place him? Who, who, who do you think will place him? Oh, why can't you be talking about replacement now? Ah, but if eight years is over, we need a replacement. No, 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 let's wait for eight years. Nanado is going for 2020. I see. Inshallah, he will win. Then 
when we are entering 2023, 20, there are about so, so he's for replacement. So, so now you don't have any names. No, 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 no. If you have names, now you want to cause trouble. I see. Yes. But but Polafoko Kovne Japan and Sami Krab still remain suspended. Yeah, members of the party. Do, do you see a political yeah, there's future? No suspension again. You know, for them in the MPP, there's no suspension. No, it's over. Hmm. They are free men. But but what what, what they are they are what? Free men. They are free. So are they part of the party? Yes, they are members of the party. So um, do you see them coming to meeting? Well, Afo, Afo, Afoko and Nessa make crap. It's been a long time I've seen them. Mm. But uh, Afo, Kwabna, I saw him in Cape Coast. And then when this issue about GFA came on board, I heard him a couple of times mm -hmm. talking. But I didn't see him at Koforidia. And because the crowd was thick, I don't know. But I didn't see him at Koforidia. But Afo, Afoko and Nessa make crap. It's been a long I'm time. I'm talking about political future for them. I mean, do you see them holding some offices in the party, some government appointees or appointment? Yeah, for appointment, you know, obviously is the prerogative of the president, not not me. But having to hold positions in, in, in MPP is is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. Thank you so much for talking to the Thank heart. You, my dear. Uh, Member of Parliament for Pandai constituency and uh, Deputy Majority Whip. Uh, for Parliament, uh, Matthew Nindam, Honorable Matthew Nindam has been our guest and we are grateful, sir, for your time. You've been watching The Hard Truth and we are proudly brought to you by Murphy Homes, Dawa Industrial City and Paul's Fitness Gym. Oh, and uh, White Park Academy. And I'll catch a repeat of the program tomorrow. It's at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. My name is Nana Akusi Akunida Santi Samuels. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.